Hi, beautiful people. All praises to the Most High. So, diligence. Diligence means to be careful and persist, careful and persistent work or effort. And another word that's similar to diligence is conscientiousness and tenacity. So, conscientiousness means the quality to do one's work or duty well and thoroughly. So, being diligent is the quality to do one's work or duty well and thoroughly, careful and persistent in work or effort. Tenacity, the quality or fact of being very determined. Determination, all right? The quality or fact of continuing to exist, persistence. So some other similar words to it is attentiveness, rigor, earnestness, persistence, per perseverance, consistency, zeal. You know, and the Bible says the zeal of God. Dedication thoroughness, application, so putting in that work, effort, continuance, attention, care, tenacity, so just persistence, so this is diligent. So the rewards, of rewards, blessings, and benefits of diligence and being diligent, so doctrine and covenants, 107 and 99 to 100, and we're going to go through Proverbs and Peter and some other scriptures to learn about diligence and the benefits that come with diligence and the blessings and rewards because God rewards people who are diligent, all right? Doctrine and Covenants 107 and 99 to 100. Wherefore, let, now let every man learn his duty. So everyone has to know their duty because being diligent, that means you're careful and persistent in work or effort. But where do you get this duty and work from? You get it from God. That's why some are called for t to be a teacher, some are called to be a prophet, some are called to be a seer. You have to know the duty and what God called you up to be. A seer, a whatever it is God called you up to be, then that is what you are. You can't go to school for that. You have to learn your duty. So you have to seek God to know what your duty and your calling is. All right? You can't just go about saying you're chosen. Chosen for what? Wherefore, now let every man learn his duty... And to act in the office is which he is appointed in all diligence. Because when God puts you in a duty and an office of what of the kingdom of God to do his work, you're going to have a duty. You're going to be called in the act of an office, which God appoints for you. You got to be appointed and then he anoints you in that thing, in, in that duty that you learned in that office. Remember, even in, with Christ, right? There was a time when he was in the learning process with God before he was shown unto the people. You have to go through your learning process with God before you're shown it unto the people. You have to learn what that is. All right? That's why it says, seek God. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. You have to seek unto these things. All right? Um, now let every man learn his duty and to act in the office in which he is appointed in all diligence. He that is slothful, so lazy people, shall not be counted worthy to stand. And he that learns not his duty and shows himself not approved shall not be counted worthy to stand. Even so, amen. So that's what God says. So if you're lazy in seeking him to find out what your duty is, you're not approved with him. And you're not worthy to stand with him if you don't seek him out to know what your duty is with him. What is your calling? You can't just say you're chosen and these people sit who make videos 10 signs that you're chosen. No, that's not how this works. Now 2 Peter 1 and 10. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. So you got to give diligence to make your calling and your election sure. What is that? Your duty. You got you got to be counted worthy to stand. And he that learns not his duty and shows himself not approved shall not be counted worthy to stand. Even so, amen. What does 2 Peter 1 and 10 tell you? Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling. You have to learn your calling and election. Sure, if you do these things, you shall never fall. You will never fall. That's why you're not worthy to stand. If you don't know your calling, you'll fall. You're not worthy to stand. You see that? All right. Doctrine and Covenants 104 and 79 to 80. 
and it is my will that you shall humble yourselves before me and obtain this blessing by your diligence. How do you obtain blessings? By your diligence and humility and the prayer of faith. That is how you obtain blessings of diligence. But there's more scriptures to go through that. We're going to go through the King James Bible as well. And in as much as you are diligent and humble and exercise the prayer of faith, behold, I will soften the hearts of those whom you are in debt until I shall send means unto you for your deliverance. But there's great things that come with diligence. I'm going through them. Doctrine and Covenants 38. Wherefore, give heed unto these things and be diligent in keeping my commandments. So blessings come with being diligent in keeping God's commandments. Putting in the effort, persevering. Remember what diligence means, right? And you shall be blessed unto eternal life. Amen. Knowing your duty with God, keeping diligent in that, keeping his commandments, you shall be blessed unto eternal life. Doctrine and Covenants 84 and 43. And now give and I now give unto you a commandment to beware concerning yourselves, to give diligence, dil, to give diligent heed to the words of eternal life. So what is something you should do? You should give diligent heed to the words of eternal life. For you shall live by every word that proceeds forth from the mouth of God. For the word of the Lord is truth, and whatsoever is truth is light, and whatsoever is light is spirit, even the spirit of Christ. And the spirit gives light to every man that comes into the world, and the spirit enlightens every man through the world that hearkens to the voice of the spirit. Now Proverbs 4 and 23. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. What, what are you supposed to keep? You're supposed to keep your heart with all diligence. This is how you're supposed to keep your heart. It also tells you keep your heart pure. Keep your And then it also tells you keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Now 2 Corinthians 8 and 7. Therefore, as you abide in everything in faith and utterance, and knowledge and in all diligence. So it tells you to keep all diligence and in your love to us, see that you abound in this grace also, that you keep all diligence, not a little bit of diligence, all diligence, right? Now, Doctrine and Covenants 75 and 29. Let every man be diligent in all things. What must you be doing? Diligent in all things. And the idler, the idol, idler shall not have place in the church except he repent and mend his ways. What does it tell you about the slothful? A slothful, a lazy person is an idler. They're not putting in the work. Right? They're not putting in the work. Those are the people who talk about people. Losers talk about winners. Winners talk about winning. Let every man be diligent in all things. And the idler shall not have place in the church, except he repent and mend his ways. He had to put in the work to get the reward. Messiah 7 and 33. But let, let me go to Proverbs before I even go here, because Proverbs talks a lot about reward of being diligent. All right. Proverbs 10 and 4. He becomes poor that deals with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. So the hand of the diligent makes rich. Right? Mosiah 7 and 33. What is the next benefit of being diligent? But if you will turn to the Lord with full purpose of heart. Remember it tells you your heart should be, you should have a diligent heart. Keep thy heart with all diligence in Proverbs 4 and 23. For out of it are the issues of life. Now, what does it tell you right here about the heart? Mosiah 7 and 33, but if you will turn to the Lord with full purpose of heart and put your trust in him and serve him with all diligence of mind. So now it tells you about diligence of mind, diligence of heart. If you do this, he will, according to his own will and pleasure, deliver you out of bondage. Whatever bondage that be that you're struggling with, God will deliver you if you serve him with all diligence of mind. If you do this, he will, 
He will, according to his own will and pleasure, deliver you out of all, out of bondage. And your heart, full purpose of heart, what does it talk about? Keep thy heart with all diligence. All right. Now, that, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. Proverbs 10 and 4. Now, we're going to go to Doctrine and Covenants 10 and 4. Do not run faster or labor more than you have strength and means provided to enable you to translate, but be diligent unto the end. So don't be taking up work that God never gave you. Do not run faster or labor more than you have strength and means provided to enable you to translate because God is not going to give you more than you can bear. But when you take up work that he never assigned you to, you're taking, what are you doing? You're running faster or labor more than you have strength. And means provided to enable you to translate. You're not going to be able to translate what you're learning because God is understanding. But be diligent unto the end. It tells you have a diligent mind, have a diligent heart, seek him with all diligence, keep his commandments with all diligence. Pray always that you may come off conqueror. Yeah, that you may conquer Satan. And that because when you don't know the scriptures, Satan will have you doing the wrong thing and he'll be defeating you. Yeah, that you may conquer Satan and that you may escape the hands of the servants of Satan that do uphold his work. So they try to catch you in your misunderstanding of God's word. What? That do uphold his work, his servants uphold his work to do to bring down the children of light. Behold, they have sought to destroy you. Yeah, even the man in whom you have trusted has sought to destroy you. So God's telling you, even your friend, people you've trusted have sought to destroy you, not just Satan. And for this cause, I said that he is a wicked man. He's talking Satan's a wicked man. For he has sought to take away the things wherewith you have been entrusted. And he has also sought to destroy your gift because gifts... And blessings come with diligence. All right. Alma 32 and 41. But if you will nourish the word. Yeah. Nourish the trees as it. It it begins to grow by your faith with great diligence. And with patience looking forward to the fruit thereof. It shall not. It shall take root. And behold it shall be a tree springing up to everlasting life. So with great diligence comes fruit. And gifts are fruits um gifts are fruits as well too satan comes to take that away all right because of your diligence and your faith and your patience with the word in nourishing it remember in in diligence you're very thorough with your work you take care of your work you keep persevering with your work and nourishing it that it may take root in you behold by and by you shall pluck the fruit thereof which is most precious, which is sweet above all that is sweet, and that which is white above all that is white, yeah, and pure above all that is pure. And you shall feast upon the fruit even until you are filled, that you hunger not, neither shall you thirst. Then, my brethren, you shall reap the rewards of your faith and your diligence. So what will you reap? You will reap the rewards of your faith and your diligence. And it tells you the hands of the diligence make rich. But now it tells you God will bless you for being diligent. You shall reap the rewards of your faith and your diligence and patience and long suffering, waiting for the tree to bring forth fruit unto you. Now, Doctrine and Covenants 59 and 3 to 4. Ye, yeah, ye blessed are they whose feet stand upon the land of Zion and who have obeyed my gospel, for they shall receive for their reward the good things of the earth, and it shall bring forth its strength. And they shall also be crowned with blessings from above, yeah, and with commandments not a few, and with revelations in their time. They that are faithful and diligent before me. So who gets these great blessings from God? To be crowned with blessings from above, and with the commandments not few, and with revelations in their time. They that are faithful and diligent before me. So the faithful and the diligent before him. You get fruits, you get crowns of blessings. Now, Alma 7 and 23. And now I would that you should be humble and be submissive and gentle, easy to be entreated, full of patience and long suffering, being temperate in all things, being diligent in keeping the commandments of God in all times. 
So what does it say? To keep keeping the commandments of God in all times, being diligent to do that in all times. And this is there's another we read before it says to be keep, to be diligent in keeping God's commandments, but it's here again in another book, asking for whatsoever things you stand in need, both spiritual and temporal, always returning thanks unto God for whatsoever things ye do receive. You give thanks to God for everything he gives you, whether it be spiritual or temporal, which is this world. Proverbs 27 and 23. Be thou diligent to know the state of thy flock and look well to thy herd. So in the duty and the assignment that God gives you for the work for his kingdom, it tells you to be diligent to know the state of your flock to whoever God gives you and look well to thy herd. Now, in 1 Nephi 16 and 4, he tells you that he was diligent in keeping God's command. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, did exhort my brethren with all diligence. He taught them with all diligence to keep the commandments of the Lord. So that is what be thou diligent to know the state of thy flock and look well to thy herd. That's what he was doing. I, Nephi, did exhort my brethren with all diligence to keep the commandments of the Lord. And it came to pass that they did humble themselves before the Lord, insomuch that I had joy and great hopes of them, that they would walk in the paths of righteousness. Remember, learn righteousness, because without righteousness is death. So you need to learn to walk in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even Psalms tells you that. David Psalms. Um, 2 Peter 3 and 14. Wherefore, beloved, Seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. So what does it say? Seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. Now, Jacob 2 and 3. And ye yourselves know that I have hitherto been diligent in the, in the office of my calling, what, whatever God called you to do. You have to seek God to understand your calling. He has to season you in your calling before you get your showing to work in your calling. But I this day am weighed down with much more desires and anxiety for the welfare of your souls that I have hitherto been. Isn't he being diligent to know the state of his flock? Yeah, he's saying, and ye yourselves know that I have hitherto been diligent in the office of my calling. He knows his duty. He knows his work from God, his calling. But I this day am weighed down with much more desire and anxiety for the welfare of your souls and that I have hitherto been. So the people who have a calling, they are going to care about your souls, the welfare of your souls. They're not going to want any money from you. They're not going to want anything from you. Their whole purpose is to save your souls because they care for it. All right? Now, Alma 38 and 10. And now... As you have begun to teach the word, even so I would that you should continue to teach. And I would that you be diligent and temperate in all things. Right? Now, 2 Peter 3 and 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. All right? Just went back up. Now... Proverbs 12 and 24, the hand of the diligent bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. What does it tell you about the slothful in doctrine and covenants and the diligent? So if you're not diligent, that means you're lazy, you're slothful. You're not putting in the work. You'll be under tribute. Diligent people bear rule. The ones who are putting in the effort and putting in the work and doing their calling but the sothful shall be under tribute. But let's go back up what God talks about the sothful in Doctrine and Covenants. Wherefore, now let every man learn his duty and to act in the office in which he is appointed in all diligence. He that is sothful shall not be counted worthy to stand. And he that learns not his duty and shows himself not approved, 
shall not be counted worthy to stand. Even so, amen. So you see, there's rewards, blessings, and benefits of diligence and being diligent. So you, you, you should know your calling. Give diligent heed to the words of eternal life. Let every man be diligent in all things. I'm, I'm just going back down. It's just touching on a few scriptures. Right? Be thou diligent to know the state of thy flock and look well to thy herds. So Jacob tells you he did that. And ye, and you yourselves know that I have hitherto been diligent in the office of my calling. But I this day am weighed down with much more desire and anxiety for the welfare of your souls that I have hitherto been. He did that with being diligent to know the state of the flock, that of his calling that he was set over to teach the people. And he was looking well to his herd. He cared so much about them, about their souls. All right? So the hand of the diligent bear rule. So, all right, I stopped there. So Proverbs 22 and 29. See thou a man diligent in his business? What is your business? Your, what did Christ tell you? I'm about my father's business. Did he not? He told you he's about his father's business. See thou a man diligent in his business? What business is this? God's business, God's work, God's duty and calling for you. You're supposed to be diligent in this work. It tells you to be diligent in the commandments of God. So this business it's talking about, question mark, is... The business of God. All right. See thou a man diligent in his business. He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean man. So men who are diligent in the business of God. They're not going to stand. They shall stand before kings. And they're not going to stand before mean men. Alma 12 and 9. And now Alma began to expound these things unto him. Saying it is given unto many to know the mysteries of God. Nevertheless, they are laid under a strict command that they shall not impart only according to the portion of his word, which he does grant unto the children of men, according to the heed and diligence which they give unto him. So what do you know? It is given unto many to know the mysteries of God. Nevertheless, they are laid under strict command that they should that they shall not impart only according to the portion of his word which he does grant unto the children of men according to the heed and diligence which they give unto him. So you only know as much as you give heed and diligence unto God. He'll expound and let you know his mysteries. And therefore, he that will harden his heart, the same receives the lesser portion of the word. They don't understand God's word in his is fullness because they're not keeping all the things that God's telling them to do. They're doing it partially. They're still wearing makeup. They're doing half stuff. You People know the things they do. I don't need to talk about their sins, right? They're just not going to get the same, receive the greater portion of understanding God's word. The same receive the lesser portion of the word. And he that will not harden his heart will take God's word as, as it is and do it as he says, to him is given the greater portion of the word. He'll understand God's word better. He'll, God will give them more mysteries and understanding of his word. Because they follow more of his word in obeying his commandment and take diligence to him more than them. The ones who what? According to the heed and diligence which they give unto him. The more you give to God, the more you get. To him is given the greater portion of the word until it is given unto him to know the mysteries of God until he know them in full. And they that will harden their hearts to them is given the lesser portion of the word until they know nothing concerning his mysteries. And then they are taken captive by the devil and led by his will down to destruction. They don't know God's word. Now this is what is meant by the chains of hell. Proverbs 13 and 4. The soul of the sluggard, the lazy, the softful, desires and has nothing. But the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. Because the diligent is always putting in that work. Alma 32 and 41. But if you will nourish the word, yeah, nourish the tree as it begins to grow. 
by your faith with great diligence and with patience looking forward to the fruit thereof it shall take root and behold it shall be a tree springing up unto everlasting life and because of your diligence and your faith and your patience with the word and nourishing it that it may take root in you behold by and by you shall pluck the fruit thereof which is most precious which is sweet above all that is sweet and which is white above all that is white yea and pure above all that is pure and you shall feast upon the fruit even until you are filled that you hunger not neither shall you thirst then my brethren you shall reap the rewards of your faith and your diligence and patience and long suffering for the tree to bring forth fruit unto you proverbs 12 and 27 the slothful man roasts not that which he took in hunting but the substance of the diligent man is precious proverbs 21 and 5 the thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteousness but of every one that is hasty only to want psalm 77 and 6 i call to remembrance my song in the night i commune with my own heart remember keep your heart with all diligence and my spirit made diligent search what are you supposed to be doing searching out the word of god's god's word it says be diligent to know god's commandments what it says I commune with my own heart. Keep your heart with all diligence. And my spirit made diligent search. It tells you to keep God's, seek God's word in diligence, know it, keep his commandments in diligence. Do you understand what this person was praying about in Psalm 77 and 6? Now Jacob 1 and 19. And we did magnify our office unto the Lord, taking upon us the responsibility, answering the sins of the people upon our own heads if we did not teach them the word of God with all diligence. So you, people are supposed to teach you God's word with all diligence and caring for your souls. Wherefore, by laboring with our might, their blood might not come upon our garments. Because if you know your calling and you don't help God's people, what do you think happens to the saints? your blood will come upon their garments they'll be guilty because they were supposed to do they were supposed they were blessed with a gift and a calling to help you right so diligence is this duty what is this duty you're taking responsible for i'm going to read this again with jacob 1 and 19 so and we did magnify our office unto the lord taking upon us the responsibility answering the sins of the people upon our own heads if we did not teach them the word of god with all diligence wherefore by laboring with our might their blood might not come upon our garments otherwise their blood would not come upon our garments and we would not be found spotless at the last day so if you know your calling and your gift from god and you don't do the work and the assignment that you know that he gave you you're going to be responsible for those people's gar that you could have helped right he didn't bless you and give you that gift and that calling for no reason he called you to help right heal the sick right help the captive you know all these things that you because if you're not you're not going to be found spotless that's why it teaches diligence into caring for your flock and all these things now doctrine and covenants four and six to seven Remember, faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, brotherly kindness, godliness, charity, humility, diligence. So, ask and you shall receive, knock and it shall be opened unto you. Amen. So, this is what it says. Remember, faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, brotherly kindness, godliness, charity, humility, diligence. Ask and you shall receive, knock and it shall be opened unto you. Amen. Now, Doctrine and Covenants 103.36. All victory. This is a, such an important scripture. All victory and all glory is brought to pass on to you through your diligence, faithfulness, and prayers of faith. Now, Moroni 8 and 26. The remission of sins brings meekness and lowliness of heart and because of meekness and lowliness of heart comes the visitation of the holy spirit which comforts which comforter fills with hope and perfect love 
which love endures by diligence. What love endures by diligence unto prayer. Until the end shall come, when all the saints shall dwell with God. So you have to make it a duty and an effort and persevere in diligence with prayer. You have to perverse, persevere in prayer. You have to put in the work with prayer. Right? And seeking the word of God. And learning his commandments. Doctrine and Covenants 130 and 18 to 19. What's Whatever principle of intelligence we attain in this life, it will rise with us in the resurrection. And if a person gains more knowledge and intelligence in this life through his diligence and obedience than another, he will have so much the advantage in the world to come. There is a law irrevocably decreed in heaven before the foundations of this world upon which all blessings are predicted. And when we obey any blessing from God, it is by obedience to that law upon which it is predicted. If a person gains more knowledge and intelligence in his life through his diligence and obedience than another, he will have so much more the advantage in the world to come. Now, Doctrine and Covenants 70 and 50. Now, this commandment I give unto my servants for their benefit while they remain, for a manifestation of my blessings upon their heads, and for a reward of their diligence for their security, for food and for ragment, for an inheritance, for houses and for lands, in whatsoever circumstances I, the Lord, shall place them, and whatsoever I, the Lord, shall send them. They have been faithful over many things. So what happens with diligence? Blessings, a reward, you get a reward. It talked about blessings, until now it tells you about a reward. A reward of their diligence and for their security. And you get benefits. Let me read this again. Now this commandment I give unto my servants for their benefit, while they remain for a manifestation of my blessings. So you get blessings upon their head and for a reward of their diligence for their security, for food and for ragment, for an inheritance, for houses and for lands, in whatsoever circumstance I, the Lord, shall place them, and whatsoever I, the Lord, shall send them. For they have been faithful over many things, and have done well inasmuch as they have not sinned. Behold, I, the Lord, am merciful and will bless them, and they shall enter into the joy of these things. Even so, amen. So God says he will bless you, you will benefit, you will remain with diligence. What, Whatever principle of intelligence we attain un, unto in this life, it will rise with us in the resurrection. And if a person gains more knowledge and intelligence in this life through his diligence and obedience than another, he will have so much the advantage in the world to come. There is a law irrevocably decreed in heaven before the foundations of this world upon which all blessings are predicted and when we obtain any blessing from god it is by obedience to the law upon which it is predicted you see that so benefit while they remain a reward of their diligence and for their security what does it say it'll bless them with blessings on their head blessings upon their head for a manifestation of my blessings upon their head and for a reward of their diligence for their security and lands and houses and merciful and he'll bless them now doctrine and covenants 127 and 3 let all the saints rejoice therefore and be exceedingly glad for israel's god is their god and he will mete out a just recompense of reward upon their heads of all their oppressors and again, verily thus says the Lord, let the work of my temple and all the works which I have appointed. What God appoints the work, God appoints the work people unto you be continued on and not cease. God is limitless. All right. And let your diligence and your perseverance and patience and your works be redoubled so he'll bless you double and you shall in no wise lose your reward says the lord of hosts and if you 
And if they persecute you, so persecuted they the prophets and righteous men that were before you. For all this there is a reward in heaven. So what happens with this? And let your diligence and your perseverance and patience and your works be redoubled. And you shall in no wise lose your reward, says the Lord of hosts. Keep putting in the work. God never told you to stop putting in the work. For all this there is a reward in heaven. And the work, all the works which I have appointed unto you. Who gives you this work? God gives you the work for him, for you to do. Mosiah 4 and 6. I say unto you, if you have come to a knowledge of the goodness of God and his matchless power, and his wisdom, and his patience, and his long suffering towards the children of men, and also the atonement which he has been prepared from the foundations of the world, that thereby salvation might come to him, that should put his trust in the Lord, and should be diligent in keeping his commandments, and continue in the faith even unto the end of his life. I mean the life of the mortal body. I say that this is the man who receives salvation through the atonement which was prepared from the foundation of the world for all mankind, which ever were since the fall of Adam, or who are, or who ever shall be, even unto the end of this world. And this is the means whereby salvation comes. And there is none other salvation save this which has been spoken of. Neither are there any conditions whereby man can be saved except the conditions which I have told you. Believe in God, believe that he is, and that he created all things, both in heaven and in earth. Believe that he has all wisdom and all power, both in heaven and in earth. Believe that man does not comprehend all the things which the Lord can comprehend. And again, believe that you must repent of your sins and forsake them and humble yourself before God and ask in sincerity of heart that he would forgive you. And now, if you believe all these things, see that you do them. And again, I say unto you, as I have said before, that as you have come to the knowledge of the glory of God, and if you have known of his goodness and have tasted of his love, and have received a remission of your sins, which caused such exceedingly great joy in your souls, even so I would ha would that you, you should remember and always retain in remembrance the greatness of God and your own nothingness and his goodness and long suffering toward you unworthy creatures and humble yourselves even in the depths of humility calling on the name of the lord daily and standing steadfastly in the faith of that which is to come which was spoken by the mouth of the angel and behold i say unto you that if you do this you shall always rejoice and be filled with the love of god and always retain a remission of your sins and you shall grow in the knowledge of the glory of him that created you, or in the knowledge of that which is just and true. And that is the end of diligence, and that was Mosiah 4 and 6 to 2, 10. Amen. And this is diligence, all right? So be careful and persistent in work or effort. We know this work comes from God. Let every man learn his duty and to act in the office in which he is appointed. And we know God is the one who gives out this work. He tells you he's the one who gives you the work, right? And you need to be attentive in the work that he gives you. He, we know God is the one giving out the work to his people. I'm going to go to it again, right? Now this command I give to my servants for their benefit while they remain for manifestation. No, it's not right here. Right here. Let all saints. Oh, forgive me. Okay. What's going on here? Well, you know, we went through it already. That God is the one who gives out the work to his people. Right? And I, this is about diligence, and I hope this helped you. You can probably go back a bit. I know there's a lot of scriptures that we went through just now. But here is it again in Jacob 1 and 19. 
And we did magnify our office unto the Lord, taking upon us the responsibility, answering the sins of the people upon our heads as we did not as we did teach, right? So God is the one who gives you the work to take care of his people. Have a blessed day and I hope this video blessed you.